Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of morning prayer this morning on this beautiful morning once again. Um, we look out of our windows and, and see the sunshine and see the nature, the trees and absolutely stunning um, blossom trees that are, are, are coming into uh, into sight at the moment absolutely beautiful and, and I think all of that we're reminded of, of uh, God's powerful hand in creation um, so as we come to worship him this morning on this uh, Easter Monday um, after our uh, powerful Easter service yesterday our Easter worship was absolutely superb I just hope everybody that was able to could uh, join in whether it was live or caught up with it later and could feel some something of the power um, that we have as the body of Christ meeting together. So we continue to meet together this morning uh, for morning prayer. Uh, we're going to be following the set pattern, the daily office for morning prayer set by the Church of England if you want to follow it with me. Um, the words are um, available on Facebook or on the website. There are some responses if you'd like to make them as you're, as you're sitting there. Uh, and we'll have a chance when it comes to uh, intercessions later on to pray for various things. So we turn to morning prayer for today, Monday the 13th of April, Monday of Easter week. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let, let heaven and earth rejoice. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And I'm just going to read now the Easter anthems. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. There are three uh, psalms set for today. One is only a very short one, but the first one is Psalm 111. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Alleluia! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures for ever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. 
he is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast for ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant for ever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures for ever. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Gracious God, you are full of compassion. May we who long for your kingdom to come rejoice to do your will and acknowledge your power alone to save through Jesus Christ our Lord. And our second psalm, as I say, is a very short psalm. It's Psalm 117. Alleluia. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Alleluia. Alleluia, gracious God, we praise you for your faithfulness. And pray that every nation may find your blessing in the face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And our third psalm for this morning is Psalm 146. The Lord shall reign for ever. Alleluia, praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. As long as I have any being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth. On that day, all their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise for ever who gives justice to those that suffer wrong and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that are bound. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and widow, but the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign for ever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. The Lord shall reign for ever. Lord of all, our breath and being come from you. Yet our earthly end is dust. As you loose the bound and feed the hungry, so bring us in your mercy through the grave and gate of death to the feast of eternal life where you reign for evermore. And we finish our psalms by saying together, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our scripture reading uh, appointed for today is from uh, 1 Corinthians 15, reading verses 1 through to 11. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas, then to to Caiaphas, then to to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, As to someone untimely born, 
he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before we turn to our intercessions, I'm going to uh, say now the Benedictus, the Song of Zachariah. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And we say together, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. We now turn to our intercessions for this morning. Um, as we go along, if you would like to post anything up on screen for us all to join in with prayer, please do so. Or perhaps just in the silence of your own hearts, lift your prayers to the Lord this morning. So in joy and in hope, let us pray to the Father. That our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. And we particularly give you thanks, Lord Jesus, for our Easter service yesterday and for the hope and the power that was felt through, throughout that and may we always be reminded, Lord, that we're free to do that. We're free to worship you wherever and whenever. And perhaps it's in this period of isolation, it's given us a fresh perspective on what it means to be isolated and persecuted. Perhaps not so much persecuted, but to be isolated. We just pray, Lord God, in all of this situation that we're going through at the moment, Lord, that we would be reminded of the blessings that we have in being able to worship you in freedom. And we also pray this morning for Chinese believers, particularly thinking of them the Chinese church being so isolated and so persecuted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. And we give thanks for the many Christian initiatives that are going on throughout the world 
and not least in our community, in serving our neighbours and loving our neighbours throughout this crisis. We give thanks for the many neighbourhood schemes that have been set up, whether it's through Facebook or WhatsApp. And we just pray, Lord God, that these groups would continue after the crisis and would always be there to share each other's burden and to share our Christian love with our fellow neighbours. Perhaps those that we've never spoken to before, but through this crisis, 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 it has brought us together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work <coughs> or shelter. And we particularly give thanks for Justin Madders, our local MP and his local initiatives in feeding the hungry and those without work. We continue to give thanks for the many volunteers who are working for the West Cheshire Food Bank based here in Ellesmere Port and for Port Grocery and the good work that's been done with the volunteers at Trinity Church in helping to distribute the parcels from the food bank. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That by his power, war and famine may cease throughout the world. And in a moment of quiet, we'd lift to the Lord those nations that we know that still continue to fight and war with each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, to the weak and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them and their families. And we particularly remember in our prayers this morning, Ben, Amanda and Suzanne. And anybody else that we may know who is sick at the moment, whether it's suffering with coronavirus or any other sickness or illness, whether in body, mind or spirit. Particularly remembering in our prayers the residents of the many care homes in our nation and the many carers that are working there. And we particularly lift to the Lord those care homes where they have had so many deaths. Particularly praying for the family and friends of those who have died and also the carers that have looked after these people for so long and how they must be feeling at the moment. We also remember in our prayers, Peter. And continuing to pray for Doreen Roberts. And also her husband Howard and Sherry as they continue to care for her. We pray for, for the residents in Hollymere. The many folk who join us at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. And we give, give thanks for the fellowship that those folk have in Hollymere. And for the love that they share with the rest of the residents there. We also remember in our prayers those folk who are living with dementia and perhaps have no idea what's going on in the world around them. 
So we pray for them, we pray for the protection over them and also pray, Lord God, for those folk who are caring for their loved ones who are living with dementia. We pray for patience for them. We also remember Barbara. And those are the folk that we've all perhaps said in our own quiet prayers this morning or, or lifted in our own hearts, whether they're sick in body, mind or spirit. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And so rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We come to the end of our morning prayer for today. Um, we have evening prayer, needless to say, at uh, 7 o'clock tonight and Deb will be leading that if you would like to join us for evening prayer. Um, I can't stress enough the um, importance of coming together in prayer during this time of crisis. I know Gordon and I have harped on for years about prayer, but it is so important. And at this time of crisis, I can't think of anything better than we can be doing but coming together to pray for our nation, for our sick people, for the world. So if you can join us tonight, uh, seven o'clock, as I say, Deb will be leading that. We look forward to coming together in prayer again. So have a good day, keep safe and look forward to seeing you later on or perhaps meeting with you later on, I should say. Goodbye. <laughs>